My name is Graham. I'm a Freemason in Buckinghamshire. I joined the craft in April 2015. My lodge mentor at Verney encouraged me to make my Masonic career special by taking an interest in some aspect that would add an extra dimension. Through this suggestion, I conceived the idea of making a book about the artistry, symbolism and history of banners in the province. I have been joined on this artistic odyssey by two brethren, Frank and Dave, each come with the knowledge and skills needed to complete the project in an efficient and professional manner. With a fresh pair of eyes since starting the project, we have each been able to look upon the banners as more than a name and number hung from a pole. As we have travelled, we have shared this newfound joy of the banner with members of other lodges whose banners we were photographing, occasionally encountering sheer joy from the proud representative of a particular lodge. There have even been an occasional absence of known knowledge as to the reason behind the choice of a particular design. Oh, we've uncovered some curious Masonic fact embedded craftily into the very stitch work. Making a book about Masonic banners is a quest. You need to be as much a tenacious detective as indeed you are a photographer or art historian. The banner may be an heraldic standard, a unique emblem significant and special only to that lodge. It may be a link to some past event, the icons and imagery freezing the moment in time like an insect preserved in amber. A banner may be also manifest with an artefact of locality, representing a place or person of interest. Whatever it may show, the Masonic banner is unique, always beautiful and seem to be very special to that lodge. The journey of photographing every banner in books has allowed us to see some exquisite works of art. For beyond the name, the number and the ascetic imperative, there is also the very artistry itself. The painted panels in oil and acrylics have taken our breath away. Each subtle singular brushstroke layered on the meaning and symbolism in styles as diverse as still life, renaissance, through to those often contemporary infographical styles. We've enjoyed the needlecraft's century old skills. Some so delicate and rare that we feared our breath alone would be too severe to hold those threads together. We've enjoyed some stunning examples of quilting, crochet, tatting, leatherwork, tapestry and needlepoint and we've captured them all in exquisite detail. Each silken hanging spectacle that we happen upon offers endless examples of how the banner takes on its own life, seeming to experience and represent itself subjectively through the very medium of art itself. With the assistance of a nominated representative of every lodge in the province, our book will give a brief history of every craft lodge banner and the meaning behind the imagery. The proceeds of the book sale will go to the festival. We also hope that it may inspire other provinces to create their own record of lodge banners. After all, they're quite beautiful and always of historic significance. <laughs>